Jewish channels we can review. The guilty verdict heard around the ultra-Orthodox community, Hanukkah on Ice, why these people are called punk Jews, and more of the Jewish news that's changing your world right now in this episode of the Week in Review. Hello, and welcome to the Jewish Channel's Week in Review. I'm Stephen I. Weiss. Guilty. The ultra-Orthodox licensed therapist who'd been charged with 88 counts relating to sexual abuse of a young girl he was counseling has been convicted on 59 of them. Nehemia Weberman faces as many as 117 years in jail. Weberman's case had become a focal point for those on both sides of the divide in the ultra-Orthodox community that has seen one side call for exposing wrongdoing and bringing accusations of illegal behavior to law enforcement, and another side in which most leading ultra-Orthodox rabbis have sought to keep accusations under wraps and deal with them internally, if at all. Just last week, as we reported here on TJC, one of the grand rabbis of the Satmar Hasidic sect spoke out against the accuser. Victims' advocates, though seemingly very much in the minority in the ultra-Orthodox world, have had their cause bolstered in recent months and years by media reports and now a successful prosecution of an abuser with strong ties to ultra-Orthodox leadership. Weberman was found guilty of sexually abusing a young girl over the course of several years, starting when she was 12 years old. Through near-constant threats and intimidation, including efforts to photograph her while she was on the witness stand, the victim remained steady and unswerving in her accusations. The prosecution of Weberman now becomes the latest in a string of successes for those advocating against abuse in the Orthodox community. Earlier this year, a New York Times investigation revealed both how the ultra-Orthodox have sought to intimidate witnesses and how little the Brooklyn District Attorney, Charles Hines, was doing about it. Mounting pressure after the expose led Hines to change his tune, and witness intimidation has now led to more than half a dozen arrests since. The Weberman trial will also stand for Hines as an example that he's now taking the issue of abuse in the ultra-Orthodox community more seriously. Of course, the ultra-Orthodox community broadly does not show such rapid signs of change. Pro-Weberman rallies and gatherings often easily outnumber those of anti-abuse advocates, and since the trial, a great many are continuing to protest his innocence on social and traditional media. Meantime, a more wide-scale violation of women is reported to have occurred in Israel where a television news report alleges Jewish organizations have been injecting Ethiopian immigrants with contraceptives without their knowledge or consent. The report from Israeli Educational Television featured multiple women sharing their stories anonymously of receiving contraceptive injections at the health clinics run for prospective immigrants. A hidden camera in an Israeli clinic caught an employee admitting that Ethiopian women are given contraceptive injections without their knowledge, Quote, because they forget, explanations are difficult for them, they essentially don't understand anything. The Israeli Health Ministry has denied that it has a policy of injecting contraceptives without informed consent or of attempting to suppress Ethiopian pregnancies. The American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee, which runs the health clinics in question, says that it offers contraceptives on a strictly voluntary basis. Moving on to brighter news, it's the holiday of Hanukkah this week. Meredith Gansman reports on Hanukkah on ice. You know the traditions of Hanukkah, you eat latkes, you spin the dreidel, and you go ice skating? It might seem like a new tradition, but Chabad's sixth annual Hanukkah on ice party, complete with jelly donuts, an ice menorah and dreidel, and even the hottest Jewish a cappella group, the Maccabees, warmed up the winter holiday. <laughs> Levski of the Chabad of the West Side organized the event. Our goal in on Hanukkah and in Judaism as a whole is to melt the ice, the apathy of our of, of the people towards tradition and make it warm and bring warmth and life and light into everyone's life and into Hanukkah. Catching up with Rabbi Shmuley Boteach off the ice, he said the event is a unique Jewish experience during the holidays. I bring my kids here a lot, and you don't necessarily hear the Maccabees uh, out over the loudspeaker. You don't necessarily hear Hanukkah songs. You don't necessarily see dreidels and uh, sufganiyot. You certainly don't see an ice menorah. It's just great for Jewish kids to feel that at times Judaism can be mainstream. So I laced up, gathered some friends, ready to skate, yeah. and headed to the ice. Then it was time to light the menorah with the help of the Maccabees.
In the spirit of making new traditions, the Maccabees shared how they like to spend Hanukkah. In recent years, singing on Hanukkah has been just something that's so fun and everyone's doing it now and the field is just out there and it's getting better and better each year. To see more from Hanukkah on Ice, tune into the full broadcast version of the Week in Review. Thank you, Meredith. Jewish performers and artists who are somewhat off the beaten path are the topic of a new film, and Christian Neiden has the story. Punk Jews is a new documentary about New York Jews with distinct approaches to life and faith. Its world premiere took place this week at JCC Manhattan, and the film's producers, Saul Sudan and Evan Kleinman, shared their take on the meaning of punk for the Jews. A lot of people hear the word punk and they automatically think of a musical genre with people with mohawks and you know safety pins in their ears playing three chords as fast as they can. Um, but really the spirit of punk embodies something more than that. It's, it's standing up for what you believe in. It's, it's finding ways that you can better society. Abraham was a punk. He was someone who went outside of his father's home. He smashed idols. He found his own path in the world and he said, I don't care what anyone else says. I see something that is great greater than what everyone else is doing. And I can't help but tell people about that and get them excited and start a movement. And so that is absolutely what punk is. It's about an ethos of seeing something greater in the world and just not giving up until you convince people that you are really going to change the world for the better. The film covers six subjects, including a rock band that plays those three punk music chords as fast as they can. The Hasidic punk rock band Mashiach Oi, who come from uh, Long Beach, Long Island, New York. We also have the amazing Amy Yoga Yenta, who is a uh, contortionist. We also feature Cal Holtzler, an activist who grew up in New Square, about him going back to New Square to kind of combat child sexual abuse that had taken place in the community and trying to make a difference in building an infrastructure that can handle that more effectively. We also have a street Yiddish performance group called the Sukkus Mob, and we also cover the infamous Chulent Party that takes place once a week in New York. Last but not least, we have the story Why Love, Jewish African-American hip-hop artist takes us into the African-American Jewish community. For more on the new documentary, Punk Jews, please tune into the full broadcast edition of the Week in Review. Thank you, Christian. Finally, those of our viewers who are obsessed with Barbara Streisand have no doubt noticed that they share that obsession with TJC's Meredith Gansman. She sat down with William Mann, the author of a new biography of the star titled Hello, Gorgeous. Meredith Gansman offered that same greeting to the author when he stopped by the studio for an interview, and here are the highlights. It's no secret that I am a huge fan of the subject of my guest's newest biography, Barbara Streisand. And no matter how much you think you know about the actress, writer, director, musician, this book, Hello Gorgeous, Becoming Barbara Streisand by William Mann, will tell you more. Thanks so much for joining me today, William. Why now was a time for you to write this book and you to really delve into the diva. You know, 2012 is the 50th anniversary of uh, Streisand's signing with Columbia Records. Mm. Still with them 50 years later. Mm -hmm. It's also 50 years from her first appearance on Broadway in I Can Get It Free Wholesale. And my editor said, would you want to take on Streisand? And I said, only if I can say something new about her. So what new were you looking to say? The idea of uh, focusing this book on the first five years of her career mm -hmm. allowed me to take the camera in really close and I was able to get the papers of Jerome Robbins and the papers of Bob Fosse who created Funny Girl mm -hmm. and really understand that process and how the um, and I talked to Barbara's first publicists and her first managers and uh, her first you know her first boyfriend you know mm -hmm. her friends who were able to tell me how this this girl who shows up 17 years old no money no connections how she, in five years' time, became such a huge star. Her Jewish identity also is explained more through this biography. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that, that Barbara came to realize as she was getting older was that her Jewishness was really tied her to her father. And her father was the, fig the, 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 uh, the heroic figure of her life. Mm -hmm. He died when she was you know, barely one years old. Mm -hmm. And so he became the, the, um, the, the, um, the driving force in her life. She wanted to do things that would make her father proud because he was a very, em Emmanuel Streisand was a very accomplished man, a very, um, you know, he, he, he was brilliant. He was working on his PhD, but at the same time he was working to help underprivileged children. So Barbara wanted to be the kind of person he would have admired. And the idea of becoming Barbara Streisand, you make it very clear that there was a group of people around her very much crafting Barbara. These are people who worked with this 
this this kid I mean this teenager mm -hmm. who was you know just like almost any other teenager on the street nobody stopped and said hey you know this is the one we want to make a star it mm -hmm. was what set her apart though was her ambition and in many of them have said you know in retrospect why should we have expected anything less she came to New York with that absolute belief in herself that I'm gonna make myself this huge huge superstar though it was strange it's, it's, it's still strange for some of them talking to me now um, to say that you know I'm, I'm talking about these times it was just us and our friend and and suddenly she becomes this huge huge international star out of all the details surprising facts and and parts of her story that you have told and learned in writing what were you most surprised about the two years running up to funny girl what we saw on television the Barbara Streisand the kooky kid from Brooklyn she was playing Fanny Bryce she was making Fanny and herself the same they were mm -hmm. she was conflating the two and it was a very deliberate very conscious you know publicity choice for her to do that so that she could get the part that was what interested me to see the behind the scenes um, business that went on and what do you think uh, fans and readers are going to take away from an image or an understanding of Barbara Streisand after reading this book with Barbara I was able to find that that heart and that soul and understanding where she came from and, and her family life and her background and seeing the the heartbreak and the struggles that she went through I hope that people get that too because her reputation obviously is one of you know, she's difficult and you know I think when we understand the vulnerability that difficulty um, becomes more understandable all right well thank you so much thank for you. joining me William Mann the book is hello gorgeous becoming Barbara Streisand and if you like this woman as I do you gotta read the book thank you Meredith that's all for this week from all of us here at the Jewish Channel be well the Jewish Channel is available on cable Time Warner Cable Channel 528 IO Optimum Channel 291 RCN Channel 268 Bright House Channel 330 Verizon Fios Channel 900 Cox Channel 1 Frontier Communications and now on Comcast Cable in the on-demand menu under premium channels for more information visit tjctv.com